Okay, guys, who can solve this exercise? So based what based on what we have learned on the previous lectures, can anybody solve this exercise? I can solve it, sir. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing and please share your screen with us. Okay, just give me a second. I want to open my ID. Okay. Uh, where do you find the document for the question? I just shared it with you. I, ha I have very poor memory of what the question was. Okay. okay, so the question is to implement a function called BMI. This function take, takes an input person height and weight in pounds and computes the BMI and print an assessment as shown below. So the function doesn't return anything. And the assessment is, you know, if it's either you're gonna be normal, underweight, and overweight. So first of all, we have to understand how to calculate the body mass index. And I've already provided you the what? The equation. So index is before uh, below 18.5 or above 20. 0.5 are assessed as underweight and overweight, respectively. Okay, indexes in between are considered normal. Sir, can you see my screen? No, no, not yet. Okay, so I want you to to like. Uh... So, guys, is it clear? So we, I have I've given you like some calls, and this is exactly what I want the function to do. So, okay, let's go ahead and see the, yeah, Jalal. Okay, so first of all, we need to write a function. So we use def, and then let's call it like BMI. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna take a parameter and we should define it here. So what's gonna be, or what's the parameters gonna be? Um, so it's height and inch, a height and weight. So let's call it H and W. Uh, sir, could you please read the detail? Because I can't see the question while I'm sharing my screen. Um, okay. Okay. It should be W and H. It doesn't really matter which, which is which. Like H yeah. and W. Yeah. yeah. You see. Okay. So now we need to uh, first, uh, I mean, it's best practice to write this. Uh, um, uh, how do I say? It? This precondition and this stuff. To type type of contract. Type of contract. So we're gonna get a number and also a number, another number, and then the function is gonna return a number as well. Or um, what, what was the output, sir? It's gonna, be, uh, the function doesn't return anything, it prints. Okay, so it's gonna be a non, non-type. Um, yeah, and then we should close this as well. Okay, so, um, can I see the question? Sure. Sir, would it not be a string as the output? Taha, the, uh, the equation for it, I think, was um, weight over uh, uh, height squared. Okay, so I don't know. Okay. okay, we're going to share the screen, so don't worry. So, um, uh, like the weight times 703. Okay, over... this is that question. So. Continue typing. Okay, so um, I can't see the screen, unfortunately. I, I just want to know the formula for calculating. It's weight times 703. Okay. Seven, you mean this? Yeah, all of that is divided by h squared, which is the height. Okay. Uh, h by h squared. So this is the function. This is the formula. Now we're going to define it. Okay, so we're uh -huh. going to assess. You put three. Sorry? You put three, it should yeah. be two. Oh, squared. Two. Squared. Yeah. Okay, sorry, thank you. So now we should first make a variable. Let's call this, um, mm, let's call this like BMI value. And then we're gonna put uh, an equal sign, which means we're gonna assign a value to this variable. And then we can simply, um, write the, the whole formula in this line. 
and we can say, okay, so since our weight is going to be W, W times 703 in the, in the bracket, because we're going to divide the whole thing. And then we put this and also inside another bracket, we're going to write H, then we're going to write the power with two asterisks and then this two, and then uh, we close the uh, bracket. And this is the value for the BMI. Okay, so now what's the next part of the question? Okay, the next part of the, of the question is as the following. So the function mm -hmm. computes the BMI, which you did, and print an assessment. The assessment, okay, indexes below 18.5 or above 25 are assessed as underweight and overweight accordingly. Indexes between in between are considered normal. Okay, so uh, we can we can do this assessment using uh, the conditional uh, blocks or if and else. I mean, um, so first let's let's define the range here because we're going to document our function. Um, so could you please read it again? What? Okay, listen, on the chat, okay, listen, on the chat, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, uh, on the chat, I'm going to give you exactly what, what is the function is supposed to do. Okay. Got it? Not yet. To everyone, you got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. Okay. Oh. Okay. So first, we're gonna write an if, an if block, if BMI val or the value for the BMI, we're gonna have uh, a range. Let's say if it is above. So first, uh, first let's, uh, sorry, it's, if it is like above 25, it's, it's overweight. overweight. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's first. I assume. think it's, uh, it's like, it's uh, greater than and equal to 25, uh, would be over classified as overweight. So 25 itself should be included or no? If it is just like above 25, then we should write this. But if 25 is also included, then we should write something like this. You have you have just three conditions. If it's less than eighteen point five, if it's greater than twenty five, or it's in between, and that's it. Okay, so for if each, for each uh, for each uh, condition, you're gonna print uh, the result, and that's it. For example, if it's greater than twenty five, it mm -hmm. prints overweight. If it's uh, less okay. than eighteen point five, it prints uh, um, uh, underweight or uh, if the else if the last one if it's uh, between if it's uh, greater than eighteen point five and less than twenty five it should print uh, uh, normal. average I think is yeah, normal. Remember that the condition has has to be or like ordered in a mutually exclusive way. Okay. Oh, you mean so first? So first I should do you have way? yes exactly you know the the or uh, the the no the the conditions in the F LF or in the multi F statement has to be like ordered properly. So now, if the BMI is twenty five, you are saying it's he's overweight. Yeah. Yeah, I I should change it to LF, not F. Okay. Yes. Okay. Or do whatever you want. Okay. So. So here we are having an underweight, um, and then we can also add the value if we want. It's optional, but I think it's good to have for. We can add it like this, like let's say format. And I think we have seen this in previous lectures. Okay, so this is for the situation that it is underweight, and then we should change this to elif. It's else if in but here in Python it's called elif, and then if the BMI value. So here it is better to um, to have the range, the the middle range not over a 25. So let's say if the BMI is 
greater than 18.5 and um, BMI smaller than 25. This is the middle range. This is like, like it's considered, I think, normal. Then it should print normal. And then we can also add the value as well. BMI well. Okay, and the last condition, it's gonna be, we can also add an else, but I think just to make it clear, it's better to have another LE. And then the last case is the case that the BMI value is greater than 25. So in that case, it's gonna be overweight. So we're gonna print overweight and the value as well, um, dot format. And then BMI well. Okay, so I guess I'm done. If there is any error that you guys can see, please let me know. The only thing that I would change is for the doc string that you wrote up top. It's uh, it, where it says number comma number. The output should be string, not none type. Actually, the output is not a string. It's a none type because so no, it's it's a we are not returning anything. Yes, yes. Because oh, okay. Okay. And let's just to make sure. Let's write here is formula for BMI, just to make things documented. Okay, so now, did I run it? Yeah, run it, please. Okay, so let me just save it. Um, test. Um, can you see the... No. No, no, Taha, bring the other screen for us, please. Okay, sure. Or the other, like the, 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 the console. Okay, can it exactly it? now uh, before that please type help yes and the name of the function that you defined BMI. so that's exactly guys why we need doc string look he implemented the function in a way that anybody else can understand it okay now let's try some of the calls okay bmi and i'm gonna give you the calls so like okay, let's take a look at a, a call that is closer to what we have. Okay, wh what is it? Lecture five? No. Lecture. You want the numbers? Because I already have it saved. You have it saved? Yeah, yeah. I screenshot it. Uh, one ninety seventy five. One ninety seventy five. This is a healthy. Yeah, one ninety seventy five. One oh, ninety. No, one ninety. Not one point one nine zero. So given this one no, 90. one. No, it's not one point nine. It's one ninety. Oh, okay. Hundred ninety. Okay. And seventy five. Seventy five. Yeah, but he put H first, so. Okay, then. Put H first. Seventy five one ninety. So yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's oh. change this. Okay, yes, because you have defined the height, uh, the weight before the height. Yeah. It's height, actually, height before. Like, yeah, okay. Right. Yeah. Second so, one is 75, 140. 75, 140. 70, oh, 75, 140. Okay. Uh, last one is 240, 70, sorry, 75, 240. 75, 240. and 240. Okay. There you go. Those are three numbers, yeah. We're good. Hi. Can you go back to your shell one more time? I mean, the code? Uh, the code should... Okay, so let me switch my share screen to the code. There you go. All right. I don't get why we put format BMI BAL. What is that exactly? This is just to put this value, uh, to insert this, uh, to concatenate the value inside this, uh, the string. Okay, this is, uh, okay, this is called string interpolation. Okay, string interpolation means that he is trying to print the string in a nicer way. I it think, uh, sir, we have, uh, like, you explained the same, almost the same thing in previous lectures, I guess. Yeah, 
I explained it in the previous lecture. So what's going on here is, you know, let's take a look at the first print. So underweight and then like the uh, column and the placeholder. So whatever in the BMI value will be placed in the placeholder, okay? Now, wh what he can do is, he can do the following. So, uh, so add, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, okay, so, you know, like add 2F, uh, like column 2F. So we would like to round it to 2F. Okay, so we should use the round function. Not the round function. We can use the format and we can, because the format support the number of spaces, the, like, uh, the, the, uh, the argument is uh, itself as well as what the decimal point okay so you so, mean i put a comma and then not, not comma not comma just like column here put it in the overweight it's the overweight brackets uh, right next to it actually on the right in the curly bracket you mean here yeah that's what james said okay so let's put here all right so let's check it out um all right so let me switch my screen to the the shell. Okay. So now, okay, okay. Go back, go back, please. Apply it for all. Okay, okay. Just a second, please. Um, that code, and then all right. So column dot two f, and also here column dot two f. Yes. Okay. Yeah. On the module, and then idle. Okay, okay, now Taha, listen, go to uh, like uh, BMI 197.5. No, 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 listen, listen. Listen, I want to make your life easier. Yes, go to that line, press enter. Then press enter. Exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so you see, guys, now it has been rounded to like uh, uh, to two decimal points. Okay. Okay. Before, yeah. Yeah, before it was one four six or oh, five two six up to like th uh, thirty seven, and and so on. Okay, and beside like you know like in addition to the like uh, uh, like to the argument itself, we can define the number of spaces as well as what the type of output. So now it's the type of output. It's what it's it's like uh, you know a decimal number. He can convert it to what? Like he can convert it to a scientific if he added like E, you know, to scientific. He can convert it to binary if he added B, you know? So colon B, then uh, dot to F. So that's like exactly what I meant of the output type slide in the previous lecture. Now continue the others, you know, like uh, just, uh, take the last one, the overweight one. Okay. Okay. Now, you, as you can see, it was like two ninety nine forty six. Therefore, it's two ninety nine, uh, two nine as uh, twenty nine point nine. And this guy is overweight. Anybody has a question? Like you see, like your friend was capable to implement it in a nice and good way. Oh, one more time. Can you go back to that uh, code? I want to copy it just so I can remember how to do the decimal thing. Hey, okay, can you see the code? Yeah, thanks. You're welcome. All right, I got it. Thanks. All right, so thank you, Taha. You're, You're a good guy. And you deserve a bonus for this. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Would you like the bonus in grades or part of my salary? <laughs> Well, I think great. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Okay. So, share. Let us stop sharing. Yes. Okay. So, can you guys see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, just to recap. So, exactly. You know, the type of contract here is supposed to be a number, number, and it returns nothing. And we did what the formula. And if the BMI is less than, okay, look, look exactly what, how I did it here. If the BMI is less than 18.5, why? Because look, if it is li uh, less than 18.5, it says underweight. Normal, if it's between like what, 
18.5 and 25. Therefore, we see that LF, you know, like so we covered this. Now, LF, BMI 25, less than 25. Now, the condition is normal, okay? Now, else, the BMI is greater than or equal 25, then overweight. So you can follow him or follow mine. But both of the answers are correct. Okay? So any, any, anybody has a question? Now, the, my question is, if the, my question to the others, if, the, uh, if I give you the same function and it's in meters and kilograms, can you do it? I mean, the formula might be slightly different, but I yeah, the formula so. is different, exactly. But we can follow the same formula, but we can we need to Google how to convert the weight from pounds to kilogram, and how to convert uh, to convert the height from inches to what to a meter. Okay, and accordingly, we need to what to redefine the BMI. Yeah, what's the question, Vanessa? Like the beginning has like take that input as um, like asking the user for input, like prompting. And I probably takes, did that. It's an input. It takes as input. As input. It doesn't say that it asks the user to enter the height. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So the wording is different. All right, guys. So let's move to the other question, uh, to the other exercise here. Now, this exercise is a bit advanced. It was uh, like uh, the, uh, uh, it was in part one in Dr. Vida's assignment, okay? And I decided not to add it to your assignment, okay? Because I wanna explain it here. Now, you need to what? To write a program, okay? A program. Uh, uh, using the, the the core function, which is called equation solver using LF. This function uh, finds the roots of the quadratic polynomial, which is, you know, what's the quadratic polynomial? We know that it's a function with a second degree uh, order. And the uh, general format for that function is ax uh, squared plus bx plus c equals zero. The program accepts the values, the coefficients exactly, which is uh, which are a, b, and c from the terminals, and then proceed depending on the values of a, b, c. Okay, it can detect whether the number is quadratic. If the given equation is quadratic, linear, always true, never, never true. Okay, and how we can calculate the root, and we need to like even the root if they are in the imaginary numbers. We need to specify them. Okay, so the discriminant. Okay, the discriminant is from calculus. It's equal to what for each root is equal to minus b plus the uh, square root of D over 2A, okay? And for the other root, it's minus B minus the square root of D over 2A, okay? So if D is less than zero, the roots are complex conjugate, okay? So the complex conjugate means that you have an, an imaginary number with the real part equal to minus B over 2A, and imaginary part equal to plus minus the uh, like um, the square root of minus d over 2a. It then prints out the roots with an appropriate message. Okay? So who can solve this question? Please raise your hand. Uh, I'm not sure if I can solve it, but I'd like to try this one. Okay, I uh, know I want, okay, I don't want anybody like to, to try it, but uh, like to try to solve it now, but I just want to understand if you can accept a challenging question like this. So raise your hand, those who think they are capable to solve this, this question.
All right. Okay, so I have 25 participants out of 135, 26, 27, 28, 29, 31. Okay, so let me give you like what the function looks like, okay? So before, we need to recall how to calculate the roots. If you remember, we have a formula to calculate the roots. So if we have x squared plus 4x plus 5 equal to 0, that means we have what, guys? We have an, like, uh, an imaginary uh, roots, which are minus 2 plus minus i, following the equation given in the blue, OK? Now, the functions will look like the following, OK? So it's like it's print a welcome message. So welcome to the solver of the quadratic equation. And it prompts the user to enter the coefficients. OK. So enter a number, the coefficient A. Enter a number, the coefficient B. Enter a number, the coefficient C. And as you can see, I entered all of them equal to 0. What does that mean? That means, what, guys? The given equation is satisfied for all the numbers, so it's always true. Do you understand why it's always true? Yes. OK. Now, suppose that I entered C, a number, and A and B equal to 0. What is the case here? Never true. What? Never, never true. Never true. Never <laughs> true. Because we don't, it's, it's not possible that like a number is equal to zero. So that's the second case. Now, if I enter the value of A equal to zero and I enter the value of B equal to something, okay? And then I have the value of C. Now it's what? It's a linear. Don't you agree? Yes. OK. Now, suppose that I enter the value of A and the value of B and the value of C to something, or like I missed the value of B, OK? I, I made it 0. Now we have a quadratic what? equation. So look at this. So I have 5 and 10, so I have 5 x plus 10 equal to 0. That means the root like has the following solution, which is equal to minus 2. OK? Now, let's suppose that I enter 1, 5, and 6. So I have this, this quadratic equation, which is 1 to the uh, multiplied to x to the power 2 plus 5 x plus 6. So like. You know, like how to like to like to solve it quickly. So, what are those numbers that can be added to to give us five and multiplied to give us six? There are two and the three, but because we have a plus and the plus, it's gonna be minus x equal to x plus three and multiplied by x plus two. So the the uh, like x equal to minus two and minus three. Okay, and has a real root. OK, now let's give the function a what, guys? Let's give the function the coefficients will give us what? We'll make sure that the coefficient is equal to uh, like, a comp like, uh, like an imaginary numbers or a complex conjugate. So a is equal to 2, b equal to minus 8 and c equal to 10. So if we can, if we solve this, it has a complex roots, which are 2 plus i and 2 minus i, which is something similar to what I gave you here. OK? So given those welcome messages, how many students, in addition to those who raise their hand, can solve the question?
Uh, I'd like to ask, I'm still a little confused. How do we get always true again? Zero is equal to zero. All of them is equal to zero and zero will be equal to zero. Okay, let me, let me explain, explain it clearly here, okay? So you have- That's the only condition? A, a better understanding. So, okay, so like this is the function, okay? Where, okay, this is the, the, the main function, which is ax to power two plus bx, okay? Plus c equal to zero, okay? So we entered here zero, we entered here zero, and we entered here zero. So what is the the like uh, the uh, the next arithmetic line is zero is equal to zero. So zero is equal to zero is always what true. Am I right? Now suppose that we enter the value of a and the value of b equal to zero and the value of c equal to five. So five is equal to zero. Is that appropriate? In mathematics? Uh, can you repeat that one more time? Okay, so suppose that you have five dollars and I say you have nothing. Is that true? No, that's no. So that's never true, okay? Yeah. And the linear, you know what's the linear, and the quadratic, you know what's the quadratic. All right? Yeah, that's it. I use it perfectly. Thanks. Okay. So anybody else? I want to see the, 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 the percentage. Okay, so we have 43 students who can solve this question. Now 50. Sixty. Well, I'm proud of you for those sixty. Now, for those who cannot solve the question, can you tell me where is your problem? One of them, please speak up. Don't feel shy. Actually, I have one more question. Sorry, I keep asking me questions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm trying to think, how exactly are we going to get to put them all at the same time? I, I can easily say, oh, uh, for example, the, do the first type. Is this quadratic? And then give you that answer. But how do I put quadratic and then linear and always true and never true at the same exact function? Well, you need to use F and L's. Okay. Mm, yeah, I'll try. <laughs> no, okay, so exact, look, look at me. Like, you know, based on the coefficient value, we can determine, so if A is equal to something, okay? Do you agree with uh, me? Yeah. If A is equal to something, okay? You know, that means the equation is quadratic. Yeah, there's no biggie with that, yeah. Okay, if, okay, so regardless of the value of B and C, it's always quadratic. Yeah. Okay. So if A is equal to zero and B is equal to something, C is equal to something that's not equal to zero, that means that it's a linear. Don't you agree? Uh, yeah. Okay. Now, if A and B and C are equal to zero, it should print what? Always true. And Always if C true. Is not zero, uh, we have never true. Okay. And the discriminant here will help us, guys. Okay. All right. Okay. So let's go ahead and, okay, I want to uh, go ahead and show you, like, share with you the uh, solution for this. Okay. All right, so we have, first of all, what we have to do, guys, since we need to use like uh, the square root, 
Okay. We so what we have? Math. Import math. math. And after that, what we have to do, guys, define the function as it's showing. Okay. So what's the function is equation solver, and it has A, B, and C. Okay, for the type of contracts, does it return anything? According to the question, does it return anything or it, it just prints to the context of the question? I believe it prints. It just prints because it returns anything. Okay, so we have number, number, Okay, and then what? And uh, it's gonna return non type. Now, as you can see, I said design a program, not design just a function. So we have to define the function as well as to call that, that function, okay? Now, okay, so what we have to say that the following thing, okay, so then after this, we have to say that this function does the following. It prints nicely the roots of a quadratic equation given a coefficient, okay? Now let's go ahead and do the, the steps. So, First, what, like similar to the BMI, we have to use something to determine if our, our coefficients are, uh, if our function is a quadratic or not. So based on what? Based on the discriminant that I gave you. So the discriminant, as you see in this slide here, the discriminant, is equal to d equal to what b square minus 4ac okay so that's exactly what we're gonna do okay so we go here and we say we want to find the discriminant after that we have to run our f statements okay so let's go ahead and you know okay i'm gonna copy the whole function So let's take a look at this. So if A is equal to zero and B is not equal to zero, what does that mean? Something linear. That's a linear. And so what I'm gonna print, print linear equation, okay? B, then X plus then C equal to zero. So I can, Print that function, okay, in a nicely way, okay? So I have B to say that, let's suppose that I enter two, okay? So it's gonna be two X plus the value of C, okay? And equal to zero. Now, the following equation has this root. So what is the root in this case? Minus B over, uh, minus C over B, okay? Anybody has a question up to this point? Do you have any question? Are we good? All right. So I assume we, like, we're good. Okay, those who raise their hands, I'm raising, please. So I can see who has a question, okay? If you have a question, just speak up. Okay, so we don't have any questions. Now, we have to check. So LF, okay? That means else F. A is equal to zero, and B is equal to zero, and C is equal to zero. In that case, what does that mean, guys? It's always true. Exactly. So we're going to print the given equation is satisfied for all numbers, i.e. it's always true, okay? 
Okay, so else if A and B is equal to zero and C is not equal to zero, what does that mean? Always false. It's, it's false, always false. Thank you, Ali. Okay, now if the discriminant is greater than zero, what does that mean? We uh, have two real roots. Two real roots, okay? So to find the roots, we're gonna what? We're gonna run the uh, uh, like uh, the mathematical equation to find the root for the quadratic equ uh, like a, qu a quadratic function, which is minus p plus the square root of the discriminant over two to the, uh, like two over a, okay. And the other root will be instead of minus a plus, it's going to be uh, instead of plus, it's going to be minus. And we're going to print inside. Remember, like those are indented statements. So they will only be printed if what? Discriminant is greater than or equal to zero. Thank you so much, Ali. Okay, so the quadratic equation, and here we are printing that equation has the following roots, okay? X and X2, because we define two variables, X1 and X2, okay? So let's assume that I wanna print them at the same line. What should I do? Uh, if I remember, it was slash N or slash R? No, okay, we have to use something, so here, what we have to do, and equal to what? Quotation marks. Space, quotation mark. Okay, yeah, whatever. Okay. So we have to use the end substring or some string, okay? If we would like to use the separator to separate them, Okay, instead of like having a space, we can use a, like a different separator sequence. So if we have multiple arguments and we would like to separate them, we use sep. Okay, that's from the previous lecture. Okay, so print x and x2. Now, else, okay, so that means I have checked all the, what, all the conditions and means that the uh, like the discriminant here is less than zero, okay? So that means that equation has two complex roots. So how to find them? Same thing, minus b over 2a plus, this is a concatenation, plus i. No, actually it's not a concatenation. It's, it's printing another what? Another argument, which is a string i, okay? Math. SQRT, the absolute value of the discriminant. Backslash N and, this is to print in a new line, and print this, and instead of the plus minus, the same thing. Okay? So, anybody has a question now? Um, I have a, a suggestion. What? Um, in the else if discriminant uh, greater or equal uh, than zero, shouldn't we here do the greater than zero on one condition and equal equal zero on the second condition? For example, if it's greater than zero, then the, the roots should be as you, you mentioned here. Uh, or, but if it's like equal equal zero, uh, the root is minus b over. We have one root equal minus b over 2a. If the, the discriminant is equal to what? To, to zero. To zero. That means, yeah. that means here in our b is equal to zero. Yeah? No, the, all the discriminant, b is b squared minus 4ac is equal equal to zero. Then we have one root, one real root, if it's minus b over 2a. Minus b over 2a? Yeah. So how is that possible? 
uh, because just square root of zero it, is it zero. just the same if you subtract by zero or add by zero it will give you the same answer basically if it's equal to zero there's only oh yeah yeah you're trying to optimize the the function yeah 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 but like here in this case we can include both it's so it's gonna print us the twice the same root. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 you can do that there is no single solution, like, you know, so solution in programming, okay? Okay. Okay, so let's test that. So this is the core function, and we would like to test it. So we can run this, has no problem. And to test it, we have to do something similar like to Java or C++. It's the main, okay? The main, that means that you are calling that function, okay? Now... We are printing welcome to the solver of the quadratic equation. And you see, because when I run that, and because I did not call that function, nothing will show up. There is no upstream. There is nothing out in the output. But here now, because I'm not defining a function, I'm, I'm calling. So uh, when I run this cell, it's going to show me some output. So A, I'm asking the user. To input, you remember, like in the in the okay in the what it what that finds the root of the quadratic. Uh, the program accept. If I say the function accept, then with, where we have to find to define the a and b and c. If I say the function accept, accepts. The value of a, b, and c. We have to define it where, guys. The uh, yeah. input, input inside the body of the function. Here we have to, like you know, to forget about a, b, c here, and to move those where to the body of that function. Yeah. Okay, I will do that. Okay, so let's suppose that I want to do this. I will never run it, and I'm gonna. Copy the whole thing here. Okay. I'm going to name it. Two. Score two. Okay. And since I'm using the body to input the function, it has no arguments at all. So it's none to none here. Okay, now since we have none to none, uh, now uh, I will copy this. All right. Okay, so now if we go here, guys, uh, let's go here. And why did I wrap this input function with the float? So that it actually works in the equation. Exactly, because this input function will, will ask the user to, to input the coefficients and treat it as a string. I would like to convert it to a number. Okay, and by using the float, we can what? we can make sure that the number is being converted regardless if it's integer or like a, a, like, a, a, like a float number, okay? And now we're calling, after we enter the value, we're calling A, B, and C. So we need, so the, the program will stop here until the user enters the value and after that, We'll stop here. So let's let's do something here, okay? So shift run, okay. Enter a, the, a number of uh, the coefficient a, okay? Now we can use the format functions to make it more like uh, uh, more sexy, okay? But uh, let's make it as simple as that. Uh, so a, I'm gonna make it zero, okay? And enter b, I'm gonna make it zero. And see, I'm going to make it zero. So I'm, I'm sending zero, zero, zero. So if I go to my function here, 
all of them are equal to zero. So which line will be printed? This line. Okay. So let's test it. Okay. So as I mentioned, this line is being printed. Now let's rerun it again. Okay. So let's enter a value equal to zero for A, a value equal to zero for B, and a value equal to five for, for C. So which line will be printed? The given equation is satisfied for uh, no number, i.e. it's never true, okay? So that means that in this case, okay, five or a number is equal to zero, which means that that's, a, that's a, like an always false case. So enter, so it's never true. Now, let's test the, what? The, uh, the linear part, so A equal to zero, B, I'm going to enter B equal to 5, okay, or, oh yeah, 5, and C equal to 15, or minus 15, okay? Now, what do you think the function will print? It will print the linear equation and its root. So, the linear equation is 5x minus 15 equal to 0, and the root is equal to 3. Okay? All right. Now, let's do this again. And enter the value of A equal to 1, value of B equal to 5, and the value of C equal to what? To 6. Okay, remember, what? like in this case, we have real root or... or uh, imaginary root. Hmm? It's a real root. Real roots. So we have real roots and will be equal to what? Minus 2 and minus 5. Minus 2 and minus 3. Okay? So here it's the equation x to the power 2 plus 5 plus 6 equal to 0 because we are, we are, we are, we are going in this indented elef and we're printing it okay all right now let's enter the case of having okay let's let me remember like that case uh okay so it was yeah 4x plus 5 all right 4x plus 5 Or, okay, okay, no, A is one, one. Yeah. B equal to four, and C equal to what? To five. Okay, so as you can see, it's printing uh, the quadratic equation equal to this, okay, and has the following two complicated roots. Okay, so, uh, and that's it. Okay, if we would like to make it, uh, okay, so we have, okay, so the following roots, x1 and x2. So, okay, let's make it here. Let's run it. Uh, we run this again. One, four, five. Um, I think you meant to put it in the else block. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah. 
Thank you. You're actually correct. So uh, we would like to do it here. Uh, uh, as the has the following complex root. It's one. It's two. Okay. And here we can do n equal. Yes. Okay. And since we have a print, print. Okay. I don't want to do this. Okay. All right. I'm going to do this. And I'm going to take this one. Control C. Control D. And what I have to do is the following. Okay. I can. Uh, say that uh, this is uh, okay or or here I can say that this is what here like this it's x1 equal and that's x2 equal It should be uh, right beside the minus b over two times a. Uh, if you go back just a little bit, you you'll see it. No, and this is this is right. And then, and then here uh, at the end of the uh, yeah, right here. You should put it right here after the the comma. Next oh yeah, before. yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. A little bit more. Just, just give me a, give me give me some time, okay? Oh, sorry. Hold on. I know exactly what you mean here. Yeah. 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 That's it. Okay. And let's run it. Okay. Uh, has. So what's the issue here? This has to be a string, okay? The bracket is before, after x2. No, 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 we're we, we, No, we're good, we're good. Okay, and this one we, we need to what? To comment that, okay, and Let's run it again. Okay, so, okay, one, four, five. Okay, so, uh, okay, so what I have to do here uh, to make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm good, so backslash T, okay? So this will give me what? This will give me like a space, and instead of having the comma, uh, backslash T. Okay, and here a space. So we're good. So let's run it and rerun this. Okay, so one, four, five. Okay, that's better. That's better. Okay, and 
Okay, to format it much better, I want to do this. To format it much better, I want to do the following. Okay, here, I want to do the following. So here, I have to add a space, remember, because, and the, okay, or I can remove this, okay, because I already have the question mark, and I can add backslash T here. The escape sequence backslash t and then let's run it okay you see that it's not doing like it's not doing like a, a good thing and uh, okay let's make uh, let's make sure that okay so uh yeah so and here we can do like a backslash t and we do an int sequence equal to just a space Okay, so because I want all of them to be printed at the same line. Okay, run and run again. One, four, five. Okay, so that's much better. But we have what we have to do here is to like to make a separation between x1 and x2. And because we did not do this, so that's the way it's supposed to be done. So we have to do a comma here and boom okay one five one four and five okay that's much better okay so so that's it that's it for this equation for this question now if we move it here okay so this function will ask the user promptly when I run it, it will ask the user promptly to do this. But what we have to do is, even if I run this, it will not ask the user anything unless I do a function call, okay? So at the function call, okay, I have to use uh, we, we, okay, two, and that's it. Now, so, Here's, here is what Python does. It will read this line. It will read this line and it will say, oh, that's a definition of a function. I don't need to bother myself with it. It will skip all the lines. And here it's a function call. Oh, that's a function call. Let's go back and do the function. Okay. So suppose that, you know, I want to run it again. Now it asked me. Okay. And we can here say it's zero, zero, and zero. Okay, and it says it's always true. Now, anybody has a question, guys, for me? Uh, can you just go a little bit up? I missed the line uh, in the first. Which one? Uh, yeah. The first equation. Yeah, exactly right there. Okay. And, and I also have a second question. Uh, I saw on a comment in Brightspace that you delayed the assignment too for Sunday at 11. Sunday, yeah, that's the last deadline, okay? Yeah, so a lot of people uh, weren't. Yeah, sure Sunday at question. eleven, okay. So you're supposed to read my, my, uh, my discussion, all of you, okay? So one student asked me to, to push it back, so I did it, and after Sunday, even if you submit your, like you know, I'm gonna upload the the solutions, okay? Because I want to prepare you to the, uh, to the test. And even if you submit your assignment after I submit the solution, I'm like you will not get any mark. So make sure you submit it before eleven thirty. Okay. On Sunday, right? Or Friday? On Sunday, yeah, Sunday. Um, professor. Yeah. I have just a request. Could you please uh, upload some uh, old final exams so we could practice for the for the next test, please? All final? Uh, sorry, there are some like mid old midterm exams. Okay, that's why I'm giving you something. Oh, uh, I'm giving you uh, bonus quizzes, so I'm treating you like, you know. Oh. Okay, but, like honestly, like up to this moment, I don't know what the uh, the uh, the test looks like. It's not a midterm; it's just a test. So it's a combination between what? Uh, between. What's that? It's a combination with the things we learned until until this Yes. Moment. 
Yes. Um, and uh, just one more question. Uh, are you going to post another assignment this week or you're going to Yes, yes, us, yes. Uh, I'm going to, yeah, yes. Yes, oh, okay. I thought you were going to let us study for the exam. <laughs> no, 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 I have to. Because there are six. Okay. Now, guys, if you go to a bright space, okay, and pop up the quizzes. I want you to take this quiz, okay? So we have a quiz right now? Yeah. So there's two minutes left of class. Well, do it after the class. I'm sorry, but I'm currently at work. I'm taking a break from work to be in the class. I can't really like go over this. It's the, up to I'm you gonna... to take the bonus or not. All right. It's up to you. Okay. Anybody has any other question for me? I don't see it on Brightspace. Well, it's supposed yeah, to be there. Yeah, just yeah, seeing the, the pop-up quizzes section on the, like on the side. It's not on the top bar, it's on the left side. Yeah, but they're just the pop-up uh, quizzes on the one. Yeah, I can't find it either. Me too. Oh yeah, actually, so yeah, the only only the quiz one is there. Just the quiz one. Yeah, just quiz one. Just the quiz one. Yeah, oh, only that. You can go on the course schedule and then you're gonna see the, the quiz too. Yeah, it's in the calendar. Uh, professor, just want to ask, uh, what chapter is this right now? Chapter? Yeah, this, this is following the textbook, right? Oh, listen, I'm not following the textbook 100%, okay? But okay. if you go like if to like multi F statement in the textbook, you will see that. Wait, so how are we supposed to study for the exam then? You're supposed to do all the things that I'm, I'm giving you. Like the exam will be something similar to the assignment, something similar to the task at the labs, the exercise at the labs, something similar to what are you like, you know, doing a quizzes in Coursera and something similar to the exercises I'm giving you. Now, I'm not going to be binded to the textbook 100% because sometimes I jump back and forth, okay? But please tell me the textbook is reliable enough to study from, right? Well, the textbook is useful in a way that you are practicing from what? Okay, if you did not understand anything from me, or like yeah, you would like to practice more exercises, the textbook is useful. But don't rely on the textbook, okay? Got it. So what do we rely on exactly? Just the lectures? I told you, the lectures, the assignments, the labs, and, you know, Coursera and the textbook, all of them. For instance, okay. the type of con uh, contracts is not explained anywhere in the textbook. You got that? So it's explained where? In the second textbook. So there is main textbook and there is second textbook. All right, thank you. Okay, do you see that the quiz? Um, what's LOCs? Line of codes. Um, I'm pretty sure the line of codes is not displayed in question four. In question four? Uh, question three for me. Oh, yeah, it's different from one to other. Yeah, it just says, suppose you're given the line of code, what would the thing be? And then it just gives us options. Let's take a look at that. Oh, yeah. 
Okay, so I'm gonna fix it. Um, what do I do? Do I leave the the quiz and then redo it? Just one second. I'm gonna enable that okay. for you. Okay, please. So you know what? I'm gonna delete this uh, this this question. Okay, you can continue. We have to restart for it to update, or is it gonna update by itself? No, no, no. I deleted that question. So choose any option. This will not be counted. Um, excuse me. I cannot find the test. Uh, I mean, the pop-up quiz. Where can I find it? <laughs> okay, go to calendar. You can find it there. Okay. Um, excuse me, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, on the pop-up quiz, uh, in one of the questions, I don't know if they're like randomized, but in one of the questions it says, suppose you have the following uh, LOCs and then it doesn't- I deleted it. I deleted it. Choose any, any of the options. Oh, I okay. deleted it. Yeah. Thank you. Which question? Uh, if you find the word LOC, skip the, that questions. Answer anything. So you can go to pop up quizzes and you see quiz number two. Or you can go to the, the courses and upcoming. And by the way, guys, for the next week, all the lectures will be asynchronous. I'm going to do an announcement for that. Uh, sir, if we are done the qu the quiz, can we leave the meeting?
I'm taking it as a yes. There. Okay, I'm sorry, but I have I have to go. I have another class. Um, have a nice night. So who finished the quiz? Nobody? I'm doing it, I'm doing it right now. Professor? Yes. Also, in question number seven, the correct answers, I believe, are one and three. In the, in the options, there's one and two, but it's in fact one and three, I think. What's the question? Um, it's uh, which of the following one, two, three functions given below uh, give the same result? Uh... What does the following code print or? Yeah, yeah. What does the, which, which codes print the same thing? The first one is true. No, no, no. Second. Okay. Uh, no, 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 no. No, the answer is not one and three. You cannot specify a condition in the else. Who asked me this? No, no, no. Uh, there, there's like uh, the, the main one. I thought the main one was number one. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. 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 <laughs> So do you find the, the quiz hard? No, I just need more time. Well, that's, you have to work on it. Is there my internet kind of disconnected? I just reconnected. No problem. No. Not showing me, I only have like two minutes left. Yeah, that's okay. Now, all the like you know, all these technical because we're taking this course as an online, those technical difficulties is your problem, not mine. Okay, so this is for to all the students. You have to make sure that you have a stable internet, your laptop is fully charged, your computer is or your desktop is connected to the power. You know what I mean. Uh, Mr. I'd like to ask you a question regarding print, but I'm not sure if I might count as cheating. So I'll just, is it right if I wait after the test? Yeah. I, I finished my quiz, but I'll just wait for everyone else to finish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll solve the, que the quiz together, guys. 
No, you can't. I had a quick question about the lab. If you the lab. Yeah, I just had a quick question about the lab. If you didn't mind answering it quickly. No, I will answer it. Go ahead. Um. So I was. I actually missed my lab on Wednesday, and I mm -hmm. just for future reference, I was gonna ask if by any chance I missed my lab section, the one that I'm specifically in. Would I be able to go to one of the other ones? If not, I understand completely. I was just curious because if like a situation were to arise, would I be able to? Okay, you know the thing is, okay, the thing is, I'll advise to take an attendance, okay? Because half of the 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 half of the grades are for the attendance. Now they are they having a, the a sheet for each lab individually. You know what I mean? So. Oh, if you have my permission, you can do uh, go ahead and do it. Now, for future uh, and for this lab, uh, if you remember, I told you I'm going to take the best 10 out of 11. Okay? So you still, you still can what? Can excel on the others and not to worry about this lab. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. Sir, I have two quick questions. It's not not about the pop quiz. Mm. So the first one is my lab section is on Monday, but I think we have a holiday on Monday. So what about that lab? Uh, I'm gonna be pushed back, or I'm gonna push it back. Yeah. Okay. And the other one is like, what's the test on Saturday up to? Like this lecture or? No, it's gonna be up to Friday's lecture. Up to Friday. Okay, thank you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna post those lectures on the weekend. Okay. You're so a legend. Wait, la last Friday or next Friday? Was that? Like by up to Friday, you mean last Friday or? Up to today? the coming Friday. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Sir, so I had two questions. Um, the first one was for the test that we're going to have. Is it going to be a test like this pop quiz or are we going to have to like do something? You have to do something as well. Okay, okay. So it's going to be like a bit of both, right? Yeah, hybrid, yeah, blended. Okay, that's fine. Um, and for assignment two, there's a month apart function where you basically have to calculate um, whether the two given dates are a month apart. Do we have to take into consideration months with 28 and 31 days? Or do we just use 30 as a, um, you know, like rule of thumb for being a month apart? Use 30 as a... Uh, but you know like you, you need to add an, a condition to <coughs> to capture that you know like you, you see the uh the the calls that i give you the examples make sure you're following it you'll get the full mark okay great thank you um, professor mm -hmm. just uh, for assignment number three uh would you give us uh, a little bit uh, more time because yeah, 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 yeah. Assignment number three will be due after the midterm, uh, after the, the test. So like, you confuse me with the midterm. There is no midterm. After uh, yeah, I'm, I'm used to it now. <laughs> okay, thanks so much. Yeah. Um, hello, Professor. I have a question about my assignment. Mm -hmm. uh, in the document, it says that um, if we get any syntax error, that we automatically get a zero. Um, I was just running my... Uh, <coughs> I, I got a syntax error, but the syntax error is nothing with my code. It seems as though there's like an issue with uh, the part where it says Python 3.97, and it's kind of highlighting that area. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to get a zero in my assignment. So um, I mean, just wanted to confirm it. Sorry? Assignment two or one? Okay. Uh, number two. Okay, you stay at, at the end, so I'll, I'll, I'll fix the, this for you. All right, thank you so much. Okay, Janet? Yes, thank you. Now, guys, tell everybody at the Discord, or I, I'm going to also like, uh, 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 like do an announcement. Lectures for Tuesday, next Tuesday and Friday will be asynchronous. What does that mean? That means I'm going to post the recordings. Professor, may I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, there are some cases like I've seen one or two in uh, in the assignment that uh, th the result that I got 
is a little bit different from the result in the test. And the difference is, uh, like for instance, it's the number of decimal point, number of like digits after the decimal points. And I think that's because like for sometimes that we divide two floats uh, and the, the result is also, it's gonna be a float. And then the floating point, the number of floating points is gonna be different. And I think it's because the the difference between the like processors of computers. So yeah. in that, is it gonna be like considered as wrong? No, 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 because based on the memory that we have, that you have, and the memory that I have, we have, we'll, like, we'll get different floats. But after all, so if like, for instance, the two, two decimals are okay, I mean, if they're like the same, almost the same, then I'm going to get the point for that. Yeah, you will get the full point, yeah. All right, thank you. All right, Professor. Uh, there's still 54 people in the call. Should I ask you the question right now, or is it too risky? See, that they finished it or not? Who's still doing well, it? I, I just see 53 people in the call, and I'm wondering, uh, they're probably guessing they didn't finish it yet. That's if they're still in the call. Okay. And, just, uh, and you can tell me if it's uh, cheating or not. Okay. Okay. Let's do this. Uh, let's choose participant, create, and I want to choose you. Uh, remove your, uh, you, please. Re uh, lower your, your, lower your hand. Okay, Akram, you're Akram, yeah? Yeah. Where is my myself? I need myself. Okay. 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 Those all rooms. Akram, are you back? Akram, are you back? <laughs> yeah. Okay. 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 So, okay. So I'm going to what? I'm going to go ahead and, uh, okay. Akram, you know, show us your, uh, oh, you don't, uh, you don't have an access to the quiz anymore. Oh, no, no. It's not about the quiz itself. It's something outside the quiz, but yeah. I just didn't want in case it might have accidentally been in the quiz. Okay. Um, yeah. Ask me. Uh, my question is when we do print, when do we add plus sign and when do we add commas? Okay, can you share your screen? Give me an example. Uh, sure, here. All right, uh, sorry, over here, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, I, if I recall, I, I did a whole lot of stuff over here trying to copy what you were doing or trying to do it in my own way. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, over here, for example, uh, print. Uh, I used plus string plus uh, plus. What? When do we use uh, print with pluses, and when do we use with commas? Like okay. The difference between using here, you still have one in the in the previous line in the linear equation. You have only one argument, okay? And you're doing a concatenation. So at the end of the day, you will have just one argument, and you're adding the conversion of b. Uh, to string and C to string. Okay. Now, when you have comma, that means you have another argument. You got it? Oh, uh, how do we know if you have one argument or more than one argument? That's something I never really understood in class. Yes. Okay. If there is a comma, means you have multiple arguments. Okay. Oh. Oh. Okay. So just the. Oh. Okay. Okay. So that. The okay. So like, roots the final... at. That's a string. R one. This is like a, a number, then and that's another string, and R two that's another number. So how many arguments you have in total? One, two, three, four. All right. Okay. Now, if you like in your print linear equation, you have only one argument, and you're concatenating the uh, the, the the values of B and C, okay, to that string uh, by calling the string constructor. 
Oh, okay. You got it? Yeah. So what exactly is the difference between adding four strings and, sorry, not the four arguments and one argument? Is there like a big difference between it or? No, basically, okay. Basically, when you use the comma, you don't need to worry about what, about if the, like, you know, you're not doing any kind of arithmetic operation or right. string operation, okay? Right, thank you so much. I'm so when, sorry. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm when you like, use the comma, you see that, okay, let, let's suppose that we did the following, okay? Go, uh, go back, uh, Akram. Go back to which? Here, here, here. Go to print linear equation. Uh, print linear equation. Uh, yeah. Down, down, down the, the cursor. Oh, yeah, this one. Yes. So delete the plus. Sure. Delete the plus. Okay, do comma. Okay, and you can use STRB or we can remove B, uh, the STR. Right. Okay, now comma. Comma, now comma. Go over okay. here. Now, how many arguments do you have? Uh, four. Four, that's it. Right. Okay. By the way, this might be a little extra. Do you have time or? What? Yeah. Uh, there's usually a problem that comes with this for some reason. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't get it. There's a question over here, R1. For some reason, uh, I can run this, but this part will not uh, play. Here, if I can show you, that's right with you. For example, run. Oh, my bad. Uh, a, B, C. Yeah, there we go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wait, what's this? A match. Okay. Sorry about that. I had to edit this a lot. Yeah, here in that print, yeah. Delete, delete it, yeah. This should work now, inshallah. One more. Please, please, please. Okay, so Q E A uh let's you try a number now. Yeah. It should give linear. And so I one slash one slash one over here it says i don't get what exactly the problem is with this one okay so it says that math domain error so okay you basically have you're doing uh something with r1 let me see what, what's r1 as your code oh over here Remove the app. Okay, let's see. Uh, I think it's because you're going to a measuring number instead of instead of that. I think you should actually calculate the d greater than zero or not. Then we then go to actually calculate that because if the yeah. d is smaller than zero, when square root, it just bring a mass error. What, okay, where is the d is over here? But I even tried adding. Uh, what do you call it? I even tried putting this in before. Like my first uh, version was doing this. And okay. it still didn't work. It's, it still didn't bring a like error, mass error, because you were calling a negative number under a square root. Yeah. So like if d greater than zero, then call that function. If it's smaller than zero, go to a different function. So yeah, you have to use the absolute value. Oh, uh, so uh, if I remember math at absolute, a no, 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 no. Just remove that. Remove that. Remove that. Okay. Go back. Uh, return it to d. Return to d. Okay, return to D. Return the SQRT to D, please. D. All right. Okay. And in, in inside each one of them. Uh, okay. Like do it back. Do it. Uh, control Z. Control Z, please. Okay. Control Z again. Okay. Delete that. Yes. Inside the parentheses. Uh, no, 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 no. And uh, till B. Till B. Oh. Yeah. Yes, now put absolute D. Absolute and D. like this? Yeah. All right, this should work, right? Yeah, and do it for the second one. Oh, yeah. Uh, by the way, what happens when you put float before that? 
What? What happens when you put evaluate before those things are uh, float as a function? Still, it's gonna be float. But if you have, if you made it as an integer, this will strip it and take the, just the integer part. Okay, so it just changes from integer to to uh, float. float and those things. Right? Yeah. Okay, okay so now this should work. Right? But by the way, it's gonna be float either way because you're doing like a regular division. All right. Okay. Uh, unmatched. Why? Oh, yeah, I have one more. So it should. Now, uh, how many? Yeah. Okay, you have three. Okay. Do, do, do. Go back, go back. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Now, okay, do it one, 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 one. Uh, okay. Uh, let's try over here. Enter. Yeah. Okay, now you're good. Okay, this is it. Thank you so much. I've been stressing on this for like the past 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Okay, so uh, so do you want me to show you the, the, the answers or not? Uh, yeah, it would be awesome. Actually, could you send it to my email? That would be a lot more better for you. The, the answers for the for the quiz? Uh, if, the quiz, it's going to come up apparently, but uh, the answers for this task, do you have it? Oh, it's it's on these slides. Oh, okay, that's good then. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna add it to the slides. Don't worry about that. Then I'm gonna upload the code as well. All right, that that's awesome. You're a lifesaver. Okay. Anybody else has a question? I have one. Uh, they don't mind asking. Janet, stay to the end, Janet. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, may I go on with mine? Yeah, go on. Uh, I got two. Uh, the first one is for question six of the second assignment. Mm -hmm. um, it says that uh, it must be able to accept um, like any object type as an argument. And okay, then... consider a string and integer. Okay. Okay. The one that we covered like thoroughly up to now. Yeah, but I'm not sure like how you would like sort a string. No, it's not asking you to sort the string. It's asking you to check whether the strings is so, are sorted or not. Or like all like the strings, the given strings A, B, C. So, but mm -hmm. it's so it's an easy question. Don't look it the hard way. So you compare A to B and to C. If they're equal to each other, that means that what? That means that they're all the same. All the same. But I, I'm talking about like the, the last one, sorted it from like least to greatest. Sorted it? Yeah. All right, so we do the same thing. You you know what I mean? Uh, not really. <laughs> so you want me to answer you? What do you mean? So, okay, listen, like, you know, it's if the input argument, uh, you know, uh, are different, all sorted means like, you know, are different. So what you have to do is, you know, like take one of them. So you say that if X is less than Y and Y is less than Z. Okay. Yeah. Then return it true, otherwise return false. So means sorted like in, okay, so let's, uh, you know, all sorted means that if you have one, two, three, okay? Yeah. Objects, then are they sorted or not? Yeah, they are. Okay, that's it. Yeah, I mean, I did that, but uh, I'm talking about like strings, like. It's going to be the same thing. Oh, yeah. oh okay. I, got, I think I see it. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the second question I had was, um, do you have like any sort of recommended like study guide for the test or any sort of, you know, Listen, if, do you understand the labs properly? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. Do you understand my lectures properly? Yeah, mostly. Mostly. Okay. Uh, uh, like, are you enrolled in Coursera? Uh, I am, but I haven't done much in it to be honest. Just, you know, okay, you know, test your knowledge by doing the quizzes, okay? If you don't have time to watch it. Okay. 
Okay. If you're so for seven quizzes? Yeah. If you're good at these three, you're good. At uh, which three? If you're good at the labs, if you're good at the assignments, if you're good at the lectures, and if you're good at the Coursera's uh, quizzes, you're gonna get A plus. Oh, okay. Um, and the Coursera quizzes up to which one? Up to what we covered, okay? So for the first uh, Coursera topic, uh, for the first course, uh, I think we will we'll cover everything, okay? Now, the way that they arrange it is different than us. So what you have to do is go at the topic and see what's they're covering, and then take a test there. Okay. Okay? It's optional. Because you're eager to learn more and to test your knowledge. Right. Yeah. Right. So that's everything. There's like no um, no examples we can look at for the questions that could come up. Well, which anything? questions? Well, like questions that could be on the test. Right? On the test, it's gonna be similar to. Listen, I'm uh, you know like I'm not the only one who. Okay, uh, for the last test, I promise to give you questions, because I'm the one who's gonna write it. Okay. But for this one, uh, four professors will write it, okay? So I don't want to give you something, you rely on it, and then you tell me, oh, it's different. I see, all right. So uh, but, I, but the like the a template is, is something similar to the multiple choice that I'm giving you, as well as to the assignment and the lab exercises. Okay, so it's going to be like multiple choice in programming. And programming, and it's not going to be challenging like the assignment, nor easier than the labs. Oh, so okay. Something in between. I see. Okay, that's good. Okay. I was afraid I was going to have to do like assignment questions in like one hour. Oh, honestly, like, you know, like, no. no. Okay, great. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, I think that's everything I need to know. Yeah. Thanks a ton. Yeah. Okay, anybody else has a question? Oh, sir. Yeah, I have a question. Okay. Uh, it might be a stupid one. Uh, for question five in assignment, in the assignment, it's only asked for true or false, right? Yeah. Okay, it's not like, because it didn't have an example, I thought it would be like- But it has an okay. example at the, at the, like, you know, at the discussion. Some of them, they ask me, to have some example, it, it's as a discussion. And if you go, if you see at the assignment itself, it says this will return it true because of this reason. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I have to like return the whole sentence. So I thought I was talking about. No, 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 no. Okay, it's, yeah. it's I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help you to understand. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Yep. Thank you.